Hey guys! Today I want to talk about my own progression strategy, what mistakes I made and what I would do different if I decided to start over in Autoplane. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. I pushed the game with 4 units you can get from the start without any rewarding, namely Laplace, Rona, Tia and Eva. So while I cannot tell you what the best strategy would be for early and mid game progression, I can definitely tell you what you can do with zero worlds on your account. In any case, the biggest issue I think I will face is that I have not enough red and green units to do the gear dungeons I like on the highest level. You have to understand that the gear dungeons heavily penalize units that are not from an element with an advantage. So if I want to build up a team for unidentified chimera for speed and counter gear, I have to consider multiple things. First of all, the chimera reduces the critical damage from your units by 100%, means that unit with low crit damage will actually deal less damage with crits than they would do with regular hits. When you watch the fight, you can actually see the numbers struggling on the crit. Second, the chimera reduces earth and water damage dealt to it while also dealing more damage against those units, making it a struggle for the units to stay alive or justify picking them over fire units. While I think that you can beat Chimera 10 without a fire team, the clear time and success probability will most likely struggle, while also there might be a good chance that they will add higher and harder stages for the Chimera in the future. Because of that, I highly suggest to focus on non-green and blue units if you are new. It will make your mid-game in the game easier. For the rest of us who play Waifu over Meta, I would definitely suggest saving your sweep tickets for the Chimera 10 stage, so that once you cleared it manually, you can auto-clear it with the tickets. Also think about which red units you might be interested into building and prioritize them over other element units. Now as you can see, I also used double support in my lineup which on hindsight was amazing and frustrating at the same time. Double heal will easily carry you to the boss stages, in which you can also sustain the boss until you have multiple stacks of chain attacks, making it very potent against stronger bosses when they can't kill your units during your cooldowns. But this goes exactly also the other way. Bosses who have a short window in which you have to deal enough damage to prevent them from destroying your team will be nearly unbeatable without using a support from another player. In the end, it is still a very relaxed lineup and I highly suggest it for players who do not roll for new units in the early phase like myself. In the base, I will definitely max out the battle first and then resources grind afterwards, as they take effect immediately and are very fast unlocked. The shop or workshop needs a lot of investment before they become really useful. I think Expedition should be your third priority after you unlock the first named things. Also, do your arena runs if you can. You fight mostly against the same bots, and even though they might have higher CP than you, their damage is manageable, and a unit who targets all enemies can usually deal easily with all of them. The skill books are really valuable. The gear is not amazing, but nice for the start, and relatively easily to get. Also, the stamina refresh is actually great. With the stamina refreshes in mind, also get your friend list going so that you can get the daily stamina refresh and arena tag tickets from it. Skill books are incredibly valuable, as they cannot be farmed on regular stages. Only use them on units you can consider using for a longer time, and only if you really need it. You never know what happens in a few weeks. Your shiny unit might get replaced for a more important unit. Also, lower weighted units need far less skill books to upgrade their skill. This is actually nice as some 1 star units can be progressed with low risk and thus giving you a bigger variety of units to use. Gear in the early stage is a pain, but it gets better after 3 days of active play. You slowly get red 4 star gear or blue 5 star gear, which is not amazing but will most likely be used for a longer period of time, making it less painful to use gold to upgrade them. Speaking of upgrades, always use your regular low star gear to upgrade your gear first. They only take space and you really do not want to be short on hammers, when you find a really good piece. Of course, join a guild. The daily two missions you can, can do give a great amount of materials. Even if you do not need most of it yet, the gold gun is already nice in the early stages of any gacha game. For the level 1 guild job itself yet, I am not sure yet what I could suggest you. 
I myself am currently saving the currency so that I can buy the weekly gold coins if I need desperately gold. The clear ticket seems to be expensive to me, especially if you consider that it actually does not progress your account further, it just shortens your playtime a bit. Needless to say, I think the food XP item is never worth it to buy, because you will barely feel a change on higher levels. Many people actually farm the gear stages on a low level already, I think that is a mistake. Unless you can farm the last stage, always focus on upgrade stones rather than the gear grind via stamina. While the gear stages give you a bit of more money, a bigger roster of units and those abilities will help you in a lot of content that you might else struggle. The game gives you a knock gear in the early stage, to get very far. Lastly, the side story looks good and bad to me at the same time. You get precious hero pieces, which is really nice, but it is a big stamina sink and you will need to pull copies of the characters anyway, as a side story will only drop a limited number of pieces. I suggest only doing the side quests for the Aether and then revisiting it when you could get enough pieces in the side story to push your character to a higher star level. I hope it goes without saying, as you should do free stuff like ruins anyway, if you can clear it. There are many options how you can attempt the current early phase of the game. And honestly, I highly suggest rerolling for Valencia and taking Nyoa from the selective, as those are up two pieces already who will be highly viable in gear grinding during the mid game. Other than that, the game is absolutely doable without rerolling or pulling new units, but you will clearly be stuck with a very limited pool of units to choose from. Sooner or later, all of us should be able to play the hard stages. It is just a matter of time. That's it for today for me. Feel free to leave a like or subscription, it would really help me out. In any case, if you like the game or want to join a gacha discord, I will leave the infamous Cozy Corner discord link in the description.